You've got a kicks and you pivot the other direction. You have your opponent. Grabs you. The kick is to here. And it's to meet this hand. This is what's happening. If I kick, I get a result. If I try to pull, he can resist. No resist. He can resist. But if I kick and pull, he doesn't resist. But that's not the part I want, because I want to go the other direction. I'm going to kick, pull, and rearrange the head. And then we go the other direction, and you smash the head into the floor. But you have to be careful with that. But as the person grabs, yeah. <laughs> That'll be a, a fee for a neck adjustment. <laughs> but anyway, so when they, they grab, they want to muscle you in. You can also knee. If you're in real tight, we use the knee, we use the hip, and we double hit, which is going to knock him out, take the knee out, and we run the head. We actually run the head into the floor. That's why that leg stretches out, and that's why that kind of goes down that direction. You turn completely behind you. What I want you to practice, have your opponent grab you, muscle you in. As he muscles you in, knee attack, inside of liver spleen. And you would hit. Bang. That. And then carefully turn the other way, help him to the floor. In a combative situation, you're actually, that's why the hands drop. You're going to smash his head into the floor, into the sidewalk or whatever it is. That was what was going on. Did everybody do that? Yes, sir. Not the smash part. <laughs> the grab, pull in, knee, hit. He's already out. Smash. All right? Yes, sir. He's out on this. I just was holding back. I didn't really want to hit him. But you catch him in here and you catch him up here. Or you catch him in triple warmer, he's probably going to be out there. You're, you're to wrench the neck, and then you're to go and slam it into the floor. That leg goes out so that you lower with him but have the power to push that head into the floor. Everybody just walk through that. It's even better to do with the kick, but if they do muscle you in, the knee's the answer. With the kick, you kick inside as you as you hit. You kick hit. He can grab you. He could even be punching actually. And you just you cover the punch and you kick and grab that head for adjustment and go down. The leg locks out. There's a double explanation for that. That leg locks out. And when the leg goes out, it's supposed to lock. Not be bent. Lock. And that's if you have a person behind you or you have a person near you, or he has a friend, and you all of a sudden, that's what happens, and the elbow catches him right here. I'll show it again in slow motion. You back into somebody. Your leg travels back, but your leg is going to do this. It's a punch. And you're actually going to cross the knee at the four points that we show in our books, but you're going to crisscross, tap those points. Your body has to lower, and you're going to catch you just like this across the knee. As you get there, this is what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. At the same time, your hands are to be up. I'm going to show it this way for the camera and turn, but if he's standing there, I back in. As I do, my hands are going to climb. This is also going to adjust and take the head into the floor. So what you're going to work on, person behind you, he can even go to grab at you. As he does, that's what you want to do. And then run in. So there's a double meaning for this and why this hand travels back with the elbow and why that leg is perfectly locked. You're turning your back, or your back is turned. You turn from this opponent, but your opponent's behind you. You 
catch a glimpse, he touches you, goes to do something. And it's great if they're standing there with both feet together, because you crisscross both feet. Similar move that what Mr. Vindell showed. But all you want to do is punch at the knee joint. That's what's going to happen. This will catch him in the throat. That's why I kept my arm down. So you just punch. The harder you skip and punch, the faster he comes at you. He don't even have to know it's happening. In fact, it's best if he doesn't know. That kata has a double jump kick where you kick, kick again, you leave the ground. In all kata, anytime you leave the ground, you take on the polarity of your opponent. It hits him like a lightning strike. If you hit a pressure point, which is what you should be hitting anyway, it especially hits him like a lightning strike. Does everybody understand that? Yes? What you're gonna do, let me use you, you're just gonna test this, because we're not gonna jump and kick people. You're all going to pair off, take it just a couple minutes when I finish this demonstration. You hold your arm out, don't do anything with it. And you're going to hit pressure point. You're going to stand flat footed and hit the pressure point. And he feels it because it's a hip point. But then you're going to leave the ground and hit the pressure point. You see the way the body rocks? And you only know this by feeling it. Even though I hit it, he can take that. But when I jump up and I'm off the ground, it rocks through his body. Did you see his other leg kick out? You're gonna try this with each other. You're gonna just tap the arm, and the only thing you have to do is make sure both your feet are off the ground. And that's what's happening when you double jump kick. You're gonna kick, and when that leg's going out, you're to plant that one right up into the solar plex, up inward, into what we call the xiphoid process. Which, if you don't know about the xiphoid process, if that breaks, he dies. And that's why the double jump kick. First one's to double him or bring him down, and the second one automatically fires for that part. Not up here. You catch him low, you catch him here, fight's over. So what I want you to sample is, and again, the double jump kick, be taking that leg out like that, and then that one would fire up into, right into here, xiphoid process. So what you're gonna do, okay? <laughs> what you're gonna do is just tap the arm. It doesn't have to be a hard hit. Tap the arm. Tap the arm. <coughs> they feel it. Leave the ground, tap the arm. That's what I want you to do. Everybody try that. Somebody asked me if your opponent's off the ground. If you looked at the cover of my book one, it's the first place I realized that. I knew jumping off the ground hurt the person. Kind of knew that, but when I posed for the cover of book one, I was at Black Belt Magazine. They shot the pictures. I purchased that picture from Black Belt Magazine for a high fee so I could use it in my book. They used it on the cover of their magazine. They had book one and book two, only book one and book two. That came from Black Belt Magazine. We went there and they had a bunch of black belts, but they were going to tell the black belts how to attack me because I have a thing where you can just do any attack you want and I'll handle it. And that's what I told them. So they told the black belts, you do this, you do that. And the one black belt on book one cover jumped in the air at me. And I went in the air at him. So I'm off the ground. He's, if you look at that cover, I'm off the ground, but so was he. He was up in the air. I jumped up. If you think the polarity is there when you're off the ground, if he's off the ground and you're off the ground and you strike him, it's like four times. He actually dumped upside down. And if it wouldn't have been for the catchers and their quick thinking of shoving hands under, he actually would have broke his neck 
at Black Belt Magazine in that shoot because we were on a mat, but he was dumping on a cement floor, tile over cement. He, he just went upside, just totally upside down like that and started to head for the floor. Now that's what happened and that's when I realized what happens if he's off the ground and you're off the ground, he asked that question because some people dive at you. If you leave the ground and hit, and I would not want to hit somebody in two spleen 21s while he's off the ground and you're off the ground, I actually think you would kill him. Do what you want with that information, but that'd be a very dangerous move. <laughs> yeah, it's a very dangerous move. Because you feel it when you leave the ground. It's equivalent to a lightning bolt strike. That's what they call it. And I was told for years, Hohan Sokin told me first, Say Oyata told me the exact same story. I asked them both what the double jump kick was for. They didn't give me much of an explanation other than it is to kill people. And at that point, you know, I'm thinking, you're jumping up, you're kicking twice. How's it going to kill people? But they didn't tell me. Actually, when I got into Say Oyata's brain, he did tell me. And he told me about leaving the floor and the polarity strike and the hit. And then he didn't even explain that we were sitting having sake or bourbon he was having. And we were having a drink. And then he, he just said, when you leave the ground, you know about the polarity? I said, yeah. He said, well, if you jump up with both feet, you're kicking him with one while he's in the doubling process. You're still kicking him with the other foot. And he said, if you get him in this area, which is the xiphoid process, that just doubles over and breaks. The xiphoid process was the secret behind Bruce Lee's one-inch punch. He used the phone book, but he hit you with the xiphoid process because there's nobody that gets hit in the xiphoid process that won't back up. Because of the threat to your body, your health, you hit somebody and they will back up every time. So that's good to know for self-defense also. And the little knuckle hits right into the xiphoid process, and that's why Bruce Lee would do that and hit with that punch. He put a phone book there so he wouldn't break off the xiphoid process. That was for protection, and he'd lock and hit with that one-inch punch and send people back into a chair. But the vibration went through the phone book into the xiphoid process. That's where his focus was. <laughs>